And I feel like as we end this year, it's important for us to distinguish between provision and abundance. Provision is providing for what you need, but abundance is actually above the line. It is, it is beyond just what you need. So I remember going through this. I'm going through, this was, again, this was back in 2005, 2006. <coughs> Excuse me. And I am, I'm, I'm beginning to see the heart of God when it comes to abundance and favor and blessing. Then it, it's, it's quite shocking. And right around that time, uh, I went through a drive through at Starbucks, just one up over on Lake Boulevard. It was Sunday night, and I was on my way to church. I thought I needed to get myself a good cup of coffee. And so I ran up to Starbucks real quick, and I'm in the drive through I order my drink, and I pull around the corner, go to the window. And by the time I get up to the window, the person in the window tells me, hey, the car in front of you got it for you. I'm like, that's awesome. And I, you know, I couldn't say thanks because they had already driven off. I said, that's awesome. That's amazing. So I had a free cup of coffee. That moment started 18-month journey of not being able to pay for any coffee for 18 months. I will not give this one away. If you ask for an impartation, and I have people ask me, this one I've kept for myself, and it's working out for me very well. No. No, seriously, 18 months, I could not buy a cup of coffee for 18 months. The very next time I went to Starbucks, the exact same thing happened. It got so ridiculous that I would go into the store to buy a pound of French roast, which I think is the only real, real true, pure coffee. It's it black and burnt. A lot of you like to take, you know, just a handful of beans and pour water over it. I mean, you're getting nothing out of it. It's just, anyway, that, let's not get into that now. It needs to be black. It needs to be bitter. That's all I've got to say. And so I went in to buy a pound, and the person behind the counter said, oh, you don't need to buy that. I'll pay for that today. That happened. I don't know. I lost count how many times that happened. And then I got to the point where two people at two different Starbucks they, they, they told me, we are Eric's suppliers. <laughs> they said, since we work here, we get free coffee every week. So which one do you like? We'll just bring it to you every time you get low. And uh, so I, I go up and say, well, I really like French roast. It says, sounds good. We'll be on your desk tomorrow morning. Sure enough, I get to my office, and there it was on my desk with a little post-it note, Eric, on it. And they would tell me, just give us a call when you get a little low. I'm like, that is the most awkward thing in the world. I am not calling you. <laughs> He said, hey, I'm a little low, could you? That, that's taking this thing too far. So they would end up calling me. And then at that point, I felt, shh, I am actually getting a little low. <clears throat> it was better for my conscience. But I began 18 months. I mean, it got to the point where even out here in, the, in Hebrew, any coffee shop, really, I would be, I'd order my drink and I'd go to reach for my wallet literally go to reach my wall to get my card, and someone behind me would swipe the machine before I could get to it. I'm like, what are you doing? I, I'm, and 18 months just went by. One time, this was the funniest one, Sunday night, I don't know, something about Sunday nights and coffee, I don't know what it is, but Sunday night, I'm at the end of this hallway, and there's a staircase that goes up to the second level. And one of our staff needed to have a quick hallway meeting with me, it's like 10, 15 minute meeting about some mission trip at the time. And so I said, let's just grab a seat. So we sat on the staircase here. Well, Hebrews is obviously brewing coffee down here at this end. And there was the draft that was blowing, that was, that was making the smell of coffee go down directly to my nose. And I'm thinking to myself, as soon as this conversation's over, I'm going to go get a nice cup of coffee and then go into pre-service prayer meeting. So we're having this meeting about some mission trip and I'm honestly completely distracted by what I'm smelling. And I'm, I have all the plans. As soon as this one, I'm just, mm-hmm, sounds good. You can do whatever you want. Mm-hmm, sounds good. And I'm thinking, I'm not, I'm not making this up. This is exactly my thought process. But I'm thinking inside, man, I can't wait till this conversation's over so I can go get myself a cup of coffee. I'm thinking it. I'm not saying a word. I'm thinking it. And somebody walked down the hallway, and I could, we were like looking this way, and I could see my, in my peripheral somebody walking down the hallway with a cup of coffee. And they walk up and, and interrupt our little hallway meeting. And this is the exact verbatim what they said. I had no idea why I bought this cup of coffee. <laughs> That's a verbatim. That's it right there. I have no idea why I bought this cup of coffee. And I'm sitting there and I'm thinking, no way. 
Here, the very next statement was this. I don't even drink coffee. That's exactly what the person said. And I'm like, and I, I looked at it, and I, I did the nice thing. I said, well, would you like it? And they said, no. And I said, I'll take it. Thank you so much. This, I mean, it went on for 18 months, but I'll be honest with you. I was great for the first two or three months. I mean, the first two or three months, I was just like, wow, this is awesome. And I'm, I'm receiving like crazy, like, thank you so much. Thank you so much. And yes, I'll take another cup. I mean, I am enjoying the abundance of this. And after about, I'm going to say about two or three months, I found myself getting really frustrated by this abundance. I know, some of you are like, what are you talking about? I know, it, I'll explain it and it'll make sense. I found myself just getting really frustrated. I was I would getting mad at people's generosity. And to make the short as short, short as possible, God was basically saying, Eric, you only receive according to what you think you deserve. You see, all of us have a, a line, if you will, and have this moment, this point where we're okay receiving up to a certain point. But once that point gets met, then from there we start, if you will, rejecting, neglecting, or redirecting the blessing through the abundance. There's a difference between provision and abundance. And I really feel like tonight the Lord wants to break the spirit of poverty. But first of all, you have to learn what abundance is and to move out of not just living by provision, but to move into a realm of abundance. And so this whole, this whole reality of uh, where's your line? You know, where's your line? My line was about two or three months of free coffee. Two or three months. You know, once we got past that, I started being really frustrated. I started getting upset. I was actually, you know, I was giving people the stink eye. Like, look, at, oh, I got money. I mean, I'm, I'm actually, it, this is becoming a very much and very attitude issue that I'm having in my life. And as the Lord began to pound me, honestly, begin to drill me into the ground with this reality of, Eric, you only receive according to what you think you deserve. And I learned a valuable lesson in that season that abundance is not connected to your deserving it or not. Abundance is not, has no connection to whether you deserve it or not. Abundance is directly the choice of the Father. Mm -hmm. 